I know enough to realize when something bad is out there. And when you see this kind of trending hashtag, it's probably not a good sign. We know it's like the 60th anniversary for Doctor Who. They're doing these three special releases, and one of them featured David Tennant, who's... I, I don't listen. I don't know anything about Doctor Who, but I do know that people love David Tennant's Doctor and he gets a lot of love and a lot of respect. And they were bringing him back. And apparently it was all to just shit all over him and uh, continue to make sure you understand that the female doctor is the best ever. Jed, explain this clip. I'm going to play it. Explain what this means and why they uh, disrespect David Tennant like this. Hello. Just passing by because I got a bit lost. It's funny. 60 minutes ago, I was this really brilliant woman. And now I've got this old face back again. I mean, why? Well, there's a lot going on in this clip here. So this isn't actually from the 60th anniversary. It's from a few minute long children need charity special that came out about a week or two ago that showed him going back to the origin of the creation of his biggest villains. It's it's basically the equivalent of a time traveler going back to meet baby Hitler. That's basically what this scene is. And then all it does is campy music and say, oh, it's this brilliant woman. She'd probably be able to handle the situation better. And it was all done so that the creator of the Daleks, the, the Hitler in the situation, could be taken out of his wheelchair that he was in for most of his life because being in a wheelchair is offensive. It associates disability with evil and oh, they're changing geez. the canon. So he was never in his wheelchair. He's not just in his wheelchair. It's a life support system. It's used to artificially extend his life from a normal human lifespan to thousands of years. So he's all decrepit. His skin's decayed. His eyes don't work. But now he just looks like an SS soldier in a, a uniform and that's what he's always been now according to russell t davies so there's a lot going on in just that few minute charity special that this clips from and then uh what we really need in doctor this, who is a lesson on pronouns i don't think i've ever cringed harder at a scene in anything that i cringed at this right here i mean i cringed pretty hard here but i actually cringed harder at the next one we're going to show so mm -hmm. we'll i haven't seen that we'll next lead one. It up to the worst of the worst <laughs> okay um it is what we really need is a lesson in pronouns and assuming people's pronouns by the way from a fucking trans person mm -hmm. yes. I promise I can help him get home and then you'll never see me again. You're assuming he as a pronoun. True. Yes. Sorry. Good point. Are you he or she or they? My chosen pronoun is the definite <laughs> article. I am always the me. Oh. So this clip doesn't actually show it, but in a second he says, <laughs> I understand that because it's the same for me canonizing that the doctor's pronouns are not he she they or whatnot they are a definite article as well like the meep it is the doctor is the name and the pronoun <laughs> it's so fucking stupid so this actor is trans <laughs> and they are playing a trans character in universe as well correct yes yeah it's both trans <laughs> and it, it doesn't come across in the episode because of appearance but this is a 15 year old character and <laughs> It hangs out with other real life 15 year olds and acts like they're blending in. But this a actor, Yasmin, is about a foot and a half taller than all the other 15 year olds that are interacted with. It stands out like a sore thumb. Okay, so so explain to me uh, that knows nothing about how bad of shape is Doctor Who and compared to Star Wars and Marvel? Oh, it is in worse shape Which than works. them all. It, it's not even it's not even close. So, yes, a Doctor Who has always dealt with social issues, like classic Star Trek. If you've seen classic Star Trek, there's always mm. been a little bit of stuff like that. But this has taken it way too far. And this episode is the wokest thing I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of woke stuff working with you guys and being in this sphere for a while. If Captain Marvel, the first one's like a six or a seven, this episode was a 25. Like it Jeez. far and away blew away no. any competition. Because this clip doesn't actually show the worst in the episode. This one you're about to show, it is not the worst in the episode. It canonizes that in this universe, being non-binary and trans is a literal superpower that saves the city of London. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yes, we know. We know everything. Thanks. And you know nothing. It's a shame you're not a woman anymore. Because she'd have got to do. We've got all that power, but there is a way to get rid of it. Something a male presenting Time Lord will never understand. We know everything and you know nothing. Wow. A shame you're not a woman wow. anymore. <laughs> My this God. is. You have all that power and don't know what to do with it. Something 
a male presenting Time Lord would never understand. Like, oh my goodness. I guess we'll see if there's anything worthwhile at the end of this. Just let it go. And we choose to let it go. There goes their gayness. It's like it's jumping so, right out of them. This is so much worse than you guys think because that character in the right, she was a companion back in companion 2008. Tenet, right? Yes, companion yeah. to Tenet. And she had one of the most bittersweet endings ever. She accidentally had to take the doctor's mind into her, her own, but he's a thousand years old at that point. It's too much for a human brain. So she, he wipes her memory. And if she ever remembers him, she'll die. And so it's this really bittersweet ending where she has to go back to her old life, can't remember all the amazing things she's gone on. But this is just saying, you know what? If you'd just been a woman like us, you would have known that you just have to let this energy, this me these memories go, and we're all fine now. What makes this so much worse is the guy who did this is kind of the equivalent of George Lucas. So imagine after the sequel trilogy, George Lucas comes back and he makes a Luke Skywalker solo film where he just berates Luke Skywalker the entire time, says he's pathetic. If only you had been a woman, you would be so much better focusing on pronouns. Because that's what Russell T. Davies is to a certain extent. That's the best comparison I can make for you, Jeremy, is imagine Oof. if George Lucas had come in to save the day. You're like, oh, finally, we've got Doctor Who back. The guy who brought it back in 2005 can come save it, make it great again after the terrible sequel trilogy or the Jodie Whittaker era in this case. And he does so much worse than the no. trilogies could have dreamed of doing. And like that Russell T. Davies, insane. it's not like he's the guy that, you know, created Doctor Who. Right. Lee, but he's it, super it's a well close respected. comparison. Like, right. His run was like really well respected from what mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. It and brought back it back. These specials. And, and not only that, but he's like also like shitting on fans and Instagram mm -hmm. comments and stuff like that, arguing back yeah. with them. So. Of course, he didn't create it, but he, he's on a big scale. He brought it back. Yeah, yeah. And he's responsible for the revival in 05. Like, I didn't think he'd save the day, but there were a lot of people who had hoped for the first time in Doctor Who in five years. And he did this. Canonizing non-binary as a superpower. The, the line was, we needed someone who was male nor female but neither and both and so much more be non-binary is more than human holy crap this is terrible so what's the next step for doctor who jed well we actually have two more episodes in this 60th anniversary coming out in the next two weeks the next one's coming out this saturday as well leading up to the third one's gonna have neil patrick harris playing the uh, toy maker which is a villain from the first doctor back in the black and white days and it's it's just going to be super gay between him and David Tennant. And so the the leaks that have been going around for a while suggest that it will be basically the toy maker has been a fan of the show and his favorite pairing of the doctor and companion was Donna, the one who just came back and David Tennant. And so we forced them both to come back. But Donna has to teach him to let go of the past. Kill it if you have to. You have to move on. So it's only going to get worse, I think. Wow, that's uh that's pretty damn amazing how bad it's gotten.